How many of you could say that right now in your life there's something happening in which you could consider difficult? MashaAllah. <laughs> okay. How many of you, everything's gravy? MashaAllah, may Allah make everything great for you always. I mean, okay. All of us go through difficult times, right? Even you too who said things are gravy. Have you ever dealt with something that's difficult? Ever? Never. Okay. <laughs> How about you, brother? You have. Okay. If this one brother ever experiences it, he'll understand what I'm talking about. Otherwise, inshallah, you'll be an inspiration for everyone else. So, subhanAllah, every single one of us has to deal with difficult times, right? Except for that one brother. And <laughs> every single time we deal with difficult things, sometimes it can be hard to understand why we're in that situation. At the same time, there's times of ease for all of us too. There are times when, alhamdulillah, we're able to feel like nothing too crazy is happening, and we're able to just kind of relax. These are two states in a person's life, right? There's a time of like stagnation, or like, alhamdulillah, nothing too crazy is happening. Then there's a time of like, what's going on? And the Prophet ﷺ taught us that when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease, He's going to remember us in times of difficulty. So, a lot of times when we're going through the easy times, it's easy to forget that this is the time to remember Allah. But if we work on remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those easy times, in the times when it's all gravy, brother, I'm sure you know all about this, then, inshallah, we're able to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember us even more during the times of difficulty for us. However, sometimes, when you're dealing with difficulty, isn't it hard to remember that? Like, that there's like wisdom behind it? Like, sometimes, is it like, why does this always happen to me? Why do I have to deal with this? Why can't I get married? Why am I getting an F in my class, even though I haven't gone to class at all this semester? Why is my, that my, why are my parents constantly on my back, right? Like, why can't I get a job? All these difficulties, sometimes we deal with over and over and over. When we're dealing with these difficulties, sometimes it's hard to see that there's wisdom behind it. And that's why Allah, out of His incredible knowledge, blessed us with the Qur'an, and blessed us with stories in the Qur'an to help us relate. SubhanAllah, something incredible is in Surah Anbiya. Surah Anbiya is called the Surah of the Prophets. Has anyone read that surah before? Yeah? Does anyone know what surah number that is? Lose them. He went through all of those things. Alayhi salam. 
And after years of dealing with this, not the kind of sick that's like, oh, don't hug me, I have a, I have a cough. Not that kind of sick. The kind of sick that's like, I, I, like a disfigured kind of nobody wanted to be around him. Imagine if you have everything going on to the break of dawn and suddenly everything's gone. What are you going to do in that situation? Are you going to say, why did you do this to me, O oh Allah? Well, iyadu billah. Or are you going to do what Ayyub said? He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Anni masani al something has touched me and afflicted me. Wa anta arhamur rahimin, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. He says to Allah, something, something just hit me and it's, it's difficult. And you're the most merciful of the merciful. The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Fastajabna, fastajabna lahum. So we, 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 uh, excuse me, help me. Thank you, we answered him. So in that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him. And what happened after he answered him? He gave him his family, as in he gave him more children. He cured him, he gave him more children, he had money back. So he made dua and it was answered. And then at the end of this ayah, it's amazing. It says, It's a reminder for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a reminder because all of us are gonna go through similar things. Some of us here, maybe, how many moms are in the room or dads? Oh, mashallah, may Allah bless all of you and bless your children. Emmy, and bless all of you in the future with your children, Emmy. Okay, so, these, these parents, that was a really a dot, okay. <laughs> these children, excuse me, these parents, when they have children, they know what it's like, right? If you were to feel like, oh, your child, you know, is sick, it's so difficult. Imagine losing children, that qadr Allah. So when you're going through something, when you're going through a test, when you, when you can't, get this job, when you can't get married, when you can't deal with your parents, when you can't move to the school, when you can't, 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 it's a dhikra, you remember a you. He went through so many things, he made dua, I can go through them too, and Allah's gonna be with me. When you keep going in this page, talks about more prophets, and then it gets to Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. In English, it's Jonah. Maybe it's Jonas. Okay. You look that up and let me know so inshallah we can talk about the correct name. The point of the story. I'm really sorry, I really don't remember. Does anyone really know? Jonah. Jonah? Jonah, alayhi salam. Okay, what happened to Jonah? Who knows what his story is? Yes? No, you, right there. Yeah. Okay, he was, he got eaten by a shark. Yes, Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. So what happened to him is he's a prophet, right? He goes to his people. He tells them to come to back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Allah. He comes, tells them to worship Allah. They refuse. He gets upset. He leaves angrily. So he gets on this boat. What happens when he gets on this boat? There are a series of events. His name is cast so that he's, he gets off the boat. When he gets off the boat, he's in the ocean and a huge whale swallows him. Okay, I mean... Failing a class doesn't seem like as bad as being swallowed by a whale. <laughs> so we can kind of see that there's difficulty and relate to that, right? What happens to Yunus alayhi salam? When he is in this whale, what does he say? He's sitting in there, and I know so many of you have heard this dua. Does anyone know what the dua is? Okay, I hear lots of duas. So <laughs> this particular dua, it starts with subhanak, la ilaha illa. Louder, do it again. Okay, third time, all together, one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> it's very, very good effort, mashallah. The, the, <laughs> the important thing is that when we make dua, we don't do it like that. Okay, when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like Yunus alayhi salam. He's in a whale, man. What do you mean? Who's gonna help you in a whale? You don't have a cell phone reception in a whale. You can't call anyone. What does he do? He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls out. He says, La ilaha illa end. There's nobody worthy of worship except for you. Subhanak, ya Allah. Inni kuntu min al I was of the wrongdoers. Subhanallah, all of us wrong, all of us are wrongdoers. Look, Allah gave us air. We are sitting in here. Alhamdulillah, and no one's attacking us. Alhamdulillah, may Allah never attack us. May people never attack us. But we're not worried about I don't, an elephant.
trampling people in this room. Alhamdulillah, we're so blessed with so many things. You're looking at me. I'm able to speak, alhamdulillah. And some of us don't have those same abilities. But the point is Allah just gave, 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 gave. And then when he chooses for us to go through something a little bit difficult to maybe reflect on our lives, we go, why me? Why always? What's up? Something I heard which is awesome is someone said, my day has been, my day has been horrible. And then the guy was like, maybe you've been a horrible slave. And that doesn't mean that going through difficulty means you're horrible. I just thought it was really cool, like, subhanAllah, we are, we're so blessed, we get so much, and then we don't thank enough, right? So Yudas alayhi salam, he goes through something, and he realizes it. He recognizes he made a mistake. That's the important part. All of us are going to make mistakes. All of us are going to sin. All of us have fallen or are going to fall. All of us have definitely fallen if you're this age, except for maybe the very small child I saw in the back. Okay, all of us have gone through difficulty where we're the ones who cause it. When we yell at our parents, when we cheat on a test, when we get in a relationship that's not right, so many things. What does Yunus Alayhi Salam do? He recognizes he made a mistake, and then he says, Inni kuntu min al When Allah SWT answers him in the next ayah, he ends this ayah with, Wa kadhalika jil mu'minin. This is how we save the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can save us from our own selves. We make the mistake like Yunus alayhi salam, an amazing prophet made a mistake, but when we make tawbah, like he made tawbah, we can go back to Allah. So the difficulties in our life should bring us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, the last prophet in this page is Zakaria, or Zechariah alayhi salam. And he wants to have a child. Because once he passes away, there's no one who can continue the message after him. What does he do? He's making dua. His wife is barren, she can't bear children. He makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him with John, Yahya alayhi salam, and he cures his wife so that she's able to have that child. Then, subhanAllah, this is the recipe. Absolutely amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innahum, they, indeed they, kanu yusari'una fil khayrat. They used to sprint to do good deeds. Wa yad'oonana. And they would make dua to us. Rabbaban wa rahada. Hopeful and fearful. And they were of those who had humility with us and who had, who had khashia with us, that they were sincere. Right here, Allah SWT has told us they were of those who sprinted to do good deeds. They used to make dua and they used to be extremely sincere. So we have action, sincerity, no, dua, and sincerity. All these three letters put together, A, D, and S, when you mix them up, they come out as sad. <laughs> you think it's funny, but it's true. Listen, I'm gonna ask you to play along for a second, okay? When I give you the cue, I want you to say sad, because I want you to remember this. When I'm going through hardship, I'm gonna do sad. What? Sad. What? When I'm going through hardship, I'm going to do sad. sad, sincerity, action, and dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this super amazing recipe for success. Number one, sincerity. When we're going through something difficult, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Not like, like, for example, to show you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. <laughs> Don't even laugh. You know you've done that before. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's so funny. Okay. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting to listen to us, and we gotta be sincere about it. And we gotta be sincere about fixing the situation. If you're failing a class and you're like, oh, but I made dua, I just haven't studied ever, that's a problem. That's why you gotta be sincere about wanting to change. I gotta be sincere about wanting to change. Number two is action. So once we're sincere about wanting to change, the second part is actually doing the action to change. So sometimes it's a situation that's out of our control. For example, may Allah protect everyone's loved ones here and everyone's loved ones, of uh, the loved ones who are here, everyone. If there's a person who's going through a terminal illness, there's not necessarily much you personally can do to cure them. You can make dua for them, you can visit them, you can make them happy. There's action that you can do. And you can do good deeds so that your dua would be even more accepted, inshallah. So for example, instead of like, smoking hookah Friday night with the friends, you could go to the movies, inshallah, and watch a really halal movie, okay? <laughs> Next time, Kung Fu Panda is out, inshallah. I know there's a three coming. I'm waiting.
waiting for it. It's a kind of love. You laugh. That movie is full of E-Men. It's like e men are just like that. I feel you're laughing at me, but that's okay. This is not supposed to be a very funny session. Alright, the point of the story is that we have to do action, replacing the haram with the halal, trying to do action to change the situation, studying if we need to study, etc. The third thing is du'a, and this is the most powerful and amazing part. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slave asks of me, when you ask of me, I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْي إِذَا دَعَانِ I answer the one who's calling me when they call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear your voice. He wants to listen to you. You, 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 and every other person in this room. Yes, you, definitely you. Every single person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear, He created you. And He loves you. And He wants to hear you. And that's why He tells us, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدَعُونِي Make dua to me. أَسْتَجِبَ لَكُمْ He's gonna respond to you. And when we make dua, it's not that peace. It's the kind of dua, like you really want something. How many of you, probably not too long ago, maybe today, wanted something from your parents? This happened to me today. Alhamdulillah, this is about to follow today. Okay. Maybe like five years ago, ten years ago, maybe. When this happened, when you wanted something, like you really wanted to go out with your friends, or you really wanted to eat something, whatever, and your parents said no, what did you do? Begged? What else? Cried? What else? Whined? What else? Did you ask again and again and again and again? Until you finally got it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear from us over and over and over. This is our opportunity to make dua to Him. To like lock ourselves in a room, to put our hands up or put our face in sujood, say it in the language that you can feel closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. Don't say random things you don't understand. Come to Allah with your heart. And in that moment, say, oh Allah, and start crying. And Allah SWT loves that. And if you have certainty, yaqeen, that he's going to answer you, he will answer you. It might not be that exact thing you're asking for, but that's why there's three different ways that dua can be answered. Number one, it can be answered by you getting that thing, maybe something better. Number two, you get it in the hereafter. Or number three, something bad is going to be removed from you. So either way, it's a win-win situation with dua. Dua is the last part of sad. There's S, there's A, there's D. When there's something difficult, what do you do? What's the first one? Alright. There's the last part. Okay. What I'm gonna ask you to do, I really need you to like involve yourself with me. I want you to close your eyes so you don't feel silly doing this. Okay. And I'm gonna explain it in a second, inshallah. And it's totally going to relate to this, inshallah, even though you're going to think this is very random. I want you to close your eyes, inshallah, and for 20 seconds, I'm going to actually ask you to lead us. Yeah. Okay. I want you to laugh really hard. Just fake laugh. Okay? <laughs> So once you put your trust in Allah, you're not going to worry anymore. You're not going to freak out. 
because you know Allah's going to take care of it. You're working. You're making ta'a. You're being sincere. You are working. This isn't like Allah's going to take care of it. I'm going to peace out. This is working and having tawakkul. When you have this tawakkul, this should naturally make you happier. And when you're feeling happier, inshallah, it will be easier to deal with the difficulty. So the last part for the laughter begins with a what? This is L for laughter, not for loser, okay? L for laughter, put it at the end of sad. What do you get? Saddle. So, when you're dealing with a difficulty, what do you do? You put on the saddle and you ride your way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.